Hello, everyone. Welcome to VR Verdict Podcast, episode 121, our weekly podcast where we talk about everything VR. I am PJ. And I'm Wookie. And we'd like to share VR with you. If you can't tell, I have a sore throat, so hopefully it's not too distracting or annoying. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, audio viewers. <laughs> I was just going to get to. We do a bad job. We're going to start doing better. <clears throat> we have no guests this week, but just to remind audio listeners, we do the show from VR, inside VR, live in our custom area. So definitely check out in the show links. There'll be a link to the video. If you ever want to just check it out, video people, we do release the audio as a podcast. If you ever want to listen to it on the go, FYI. In your cars. So yeah, if I suddenly stop talking i'm i hit paw or mute to uh clear my throat or something so <laughs> i don't understand it's been like a hundred degrees out for a week how does one catch a cold i don't get math and science too much, too much ac and breeze while you're sleeping happens to me all the time hmm. maybe so anyway yeah <clears throat> no guest it's just a wookie and pj episode um Thankfully, we've had quite a couple of busy weeks this past couple of weeks in VR, so we have plenty to talk about. Oh. I figured uh, we'd start off with the fun we had um, playing a little Demio Curse of the Serpent Lord with the developers of the game. Yeah, that was good. Ahead of release, yeah. we played a round. We actually made it through. Um, there's videos on YouTube there'll be links to, but kind of funny. We got to... Uh, the last room, and it was a pre-release, so there were some minor, minor bugs and glitches. So we kind of were able to cheese the end room, <laughs> which was kind of funny to watch the devs like, oh, make a note of that while you're playing yeah. type of thing. So. And then be like, don't want to spoil anything, so they just stopped talking. <laughs> yeah. So they wouldn't give anything away, and then we cheesed it. And we're like, that's what we were waiting to surprise you with, <laughs> and we ruined it, PJ. But it was fun. <laughs> Saw right behind the curtain. Saw the emerald or the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. Just went, Woof, there it is. <laughs> but um, I don't know what you thought, but I thought the new content or the new character, like the new map, was awesome. They did a lot yeah. of tweaks to existing mechanics. I think they they do such a good job with that game. I love it. Some, some bringing like familiarity while making new stuff out of similar things like you said uh, the lamps and the new characters yeah. yeah it's like options going out the side but it's you know balanced going forward like if you know there's like archer has power going forward this person has like you know options can probably be just as strong as any of them but you have to be creative with it and i love those characters i probably play yeah. them poorly but i love the uh the um I love the you know, just thinking thinking differently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh in the videos we have a couple out there. Full playthroughs for the most part. We kind of clipped the ending out. Just don't want to spoil things. But um one of the developers and myself were playing in VR and Wookie and the other dev were playing on the PC flat screen edition. So there's a video of uh cutscenes or like split screen where you see Wookiee and my screens the whole time until your recording cuts out and I'm just a, a mixture of stuff so really cool um the pc version i mean if you've never played the vr version the pc version is probably awesome but if you played both vr is just the way to go just picking up the yeah. characters and moving them just so cool i love the fact that they have the pc version so if you're you know on a road trip your friends are playing and maybe you have your laptop but you don't have your headset with you you can join in a little bit it's a little like overly focused on your character and it'll it'll move around and keep things in play visually the little not really claustrophobic i was having fun playing it no big deal but it was definitely like once you've been able to like look around and pick, pick stuff up and you know it's it that's hard to top with anything yeah so it's it's very set like you said yeah. on your character but very, still fun. It's a, still a good effort. It's a 
good representation of doing a game like that with a flat yeah. screen. And it's just like we say in the, in the videos, it's just great to play something we love in VR with people that may not have VR. They can still play and try to lead them to VR. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I might have a, a headache and I might not really want to put a headset on. I can yeah. probably play a flat screen game, but if I put the headset on, I might yak just because you know, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> I love that you can just still play with your friends, not skip a beat. Yeah. I should be taking those nights off, but when people are together and you're hanging out, that's priceless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but again, in the video, you can hear kind of them talk about how they worked on it and how much time they put into it and the, and the love they craft into it. So really need to hear and see that and play it with them so yeah check yeah. it out if you're ever looking for backup i'm around i'll play demio with anybody almost any time so <laughs> More like almost anybody at any time <laughs> be nice don't be don't be jerk <laughs> uh the next thing um I got to do, which was pretty sweet, was play the main character in the meta movie um, this past weekend, and we've had them on the show. Great bunch of people. They do. They work so hard on that stuff. It is insane. Um, <clears throat> I we had them on the show, and before that, I was one of the. I was in the, one of the movies with like a, as a backup character type of thing. Again, another great experience, totally different from playing the main character, but I'm going to try and uh, get Wookie and I on there doing a, a split main character run Double see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying but, to join uh, just at least to watch or something, but I was having trouble with Neo, so I just gave up. <laughs> I gave up easy that day. Sorry. <laughs> but there'll be a link in the show notes in that. Not saying I did a great job. I I think I did all right. They tell you they they do a super job of making you feel like a movie star. It is crazy from the start to the finish. Um and then they actually go back and they'll cut up the whole thing and like they record from like so many angles. They'll make an actual like movie out of it and put your name in it. Like it's top notch. It's awesome. Nice. Um but Definitely check it out. I don't know if the story is gripping enough to watch the full movie like on a flat screen as a movie, but being in it and participating and especially being like the main character, it's pretty crazy. They it's are so good at good enough, good enough story to watch the one last time they were on in the clips I saw. I'd give it a go. I'm not knocking it all. I'm just saying it's neat, especially when you're in it because they're so good at like ad libbing and and stuff that I made a couple character choices. They can they tell you, you can do whatever you want, and they'll go with it. And I killed off a main character pretty quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> for, first, you know, if you watch it, there's there's reasons, but you can totally role play and, and choose your own adventure a hundred percent, and they go right along with it. The actors are so good. Um. It's if you've ever been in a play, even a high school play, you know, it's, it'd be kind of fun to have the whole experience wrapped around you and you not really knowing exactly what's going to happen next. You don't have to learn your lines. Yeah. You just have to be present. So that is kind of a really neat thing. It was kind of funny, a little peek behind the curtain. The, the character I ended up taking out um, actually was playing from a hospital bed. He fell off a ladder and really wrecked his body. And he was this was his first time coming back. So he was happy I took him out early so he could go, he could quit. <laughs> but it was another player? No, okay. it was one of their actors, the main actors. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I get you, the main actor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was kind of cool. Like the guy he was playing, the character, gives you little cues you can play off if you want to, like kind of doing a little back side dealing and like, hey, if we. I won't spoil anything, but if we do something like, you know, if we were to kill one of them, we'd get a bigger cut type of thing. And you can yeah. ignore it. You can say something about it or you can do what I do and just 
take him out. <laughs> <laughs> he offered it to but, you and you take him out. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't offer it, and they were not expecting that. So they were. They were. It's weird because I did that, and they were just like in in love with the fact that I did it because like that never happened before. It it made us change it up and react to it, and just yeah, those fun. the whole team is a crazy bunch. Um, but what's really cool before you even start, um, they'll kind of give you a little <clears throat> list of stuff like you want to name your character. Like pick your planet name from where you're from and kind of create a backstory. And your character, really cool, um, wears a mask and, you know, there's, it's like, uh, you know, any gender could play it. So it's really neat. And if they get to it, they'll ask you like, why do you wear a mask? And I had this whole thing written up and they never asked me about it because I threw them for such a loop killing that guy. <laughs> so awesome. I just thought that was funny, but, but you can act and talk as little as you want. You can go overboard, like anything you want to do. It's crazy. I can't like, I being like one of the smaller parts in a non-speaking role is cool enough, but being the main character, like I want to do it. I just want to do it again. It's so, so fun. Yeah. And then there's a fun Acting. after party. And... Genius. What's that? So just acting genius. <laughs> so there'll be links to that in the show notes too. Check it out. It's it's so cool. Um, if anyone ever wants to try it, I'll participate and go with them too. I don't care. <laughs> it's a fun time. Do you want me to keep rolling with my stuff or you, you want to talk about anything? I thought you're still going. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't, um, I don't really even haven't had time to play much lately. So we played, you know, Elven Assassin the other day, a while back. And then, uh, yeah. The Demio. So I'm I do. We had, um, shit. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> not really. That's, what? that's not funny. Um, that's not funny. The Atlas Mystery Group. We had them on last. Mm -hmm. I really want to take their suggestion <clears throat> and play that game with you and start it and talk and do it at the same time. Yeah, we can set that up. I, was, I, I really want to find out. Yeah. It might be a long running, you know, yeah. recording if we record that because I'm going to be looking at all the <laughs> magazines <laughs> or whatever they got laying around. It's nice. It's nice. Stream it. You don't have to record it. Just yeah. stream it. I think that'd be fun. I um I did check out Lo Fi and you know, it's pretty rough and it didn't really, you know, couldn't really do much. I couldn't buy ammo for the gun. But I got to some spot and I saw um comic book and it looked like a fully fleshed out comic book, like pages and pages. Oh well, I did. I just sat there reading a comic book. <laughs> Why am I in VR reading a comic book? But here we are. So if there's <laughs> anything like that in, you know, in the ambiance atmosphere in uh, the Atlas, I'm gonna be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a great light switch you found. Hang on a second. I'm just thumbing through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, penny books. Yeah, Lo Fi has been in development for so long. I stopped checking it out because I just wanted to see the final yeah. product, but I don't know what his timeline is. But it's I'm cool. Star Citizen. Yeah, I just yeah. gave up. Yeah. Speaking of Star Citizen, I, I looked at some ships from No Man's Sky. They've been updating. They got ships with like solar sails now, like big blue oh. panels flip out. And I'm like, well, I never, what is this? I've never <laughs> seen these things. I'm like, how long was I asleep? Yeah. There's still constant updates to that game. It's so crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing I did last week. Um, there's a free app on Steam. It's uh, called the <clears throat> uh, Museum of Other Realities. Sorry, and you can go in there and just check out exhibits and and all kinds of cool stuff. Hmm. They've had DLC. Some of it's been paid. Some of it's free. You can check it out. 
But what I really freaking love about it, um, you can go in there and there was a painting. And uh, it was just kind of like a forest painting. And I had a little fire and it had orange and blue, which are my favorite colors. So it looks really neat. But you see it kind of on a table. And you can point at it and go right into the painting and just walk around in the freaking painting. It's so freaking cool. And there's so many. There's like an underwater exhibit and stuff and all kinds of cool stuff. But this last week, they had the uh, Tribeca Film Festival in there. So it's kind of like a DLC. And you go into their little area and they had um, just these really neat little gates for each they had like 10 or more different areas. Like um, there were a couple of movies, short movies, like indie movies that were really cool, made for VR. Um, they had the LGBT plus uh, communities um, uh, layout there. That was really cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I watched one of the indie films. It was like 24 minutes. I don't know what the hell it was, what was going on. But it was a freaking awesome ride. It was just black and white, and there was a story I didn't really understand, but it was so freaking cool. <laughs> Highly recommend that if if you guys ever. I think I don't know how long that might the Tribeca stuff might be gone already, but still worth checking out. Museum of Other Realities. Yep. Cool. They have a lot of exhibits, and then they have these little. They call them turtles. It's like this green little disc in the floor that just very slowly moves around so you can just stand on it. And you and your friends can just go around and look at all the exhibits and talk, or you can you can run around on your own too. This is just VR or Yeah, it's totally VR. You can uh there's different drinks you can pull out and one drink will make you tiny, one drink will make you huge. And the other drink will make you normal size. So they had some, uh, uh, trying to remember if they were robotic. I think they were just like kind of like a dinosaur exhibit. So I made myself tiny and I was walking around and it was just really neat because they're, then they're freaking huge, obviously. <laughs> so a lot of cool stuff. I this didn't know neat. if I, yeah. I don't know if it was uh, proper to share video or pictures of things, so I haven't, but a lot of cool stuff to see in there. Actually, um, Ashley, one of the developers we talked to from Demio and played with, she had a piece in the, in the exhibit. It was really cool. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm like, I know that name. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I'm a bit dry in VR stuff. We did play that new uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge or whatever. Yeah. Shredder's Return Revenge probably on uh, Xbox. That is actually a hoot. It's like a perfect sequel to an old NES or Super Nintendo game. Like they couldn't have done it better, I don't think. The voice it's is a few closer, but Yeah. There's a few tiny tweaks, but it's so good. It's really fun. Like, with all the games on, you know, Series X, PS5, VR, whatever, all the big stuff out. Like, that game is one of the games I've been thinking about at work. And that's yeah. how I know, like, I really like something. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a 2D it beat em up <laughs> Yeah, 2D beat em up old arcade style. And they're still, if you do them right, they can't beat them. Yeah. I would love to you know. see um, some kind of version of that in VR because I love the, there's like 2D games in VR. I love those things. Like, I think that'd be a lot of fun. We should that's try playing game. that in um, big screen or something. <laughs> playing that in big screen? How? On uh, Steam or something. Because huh. you can do the Steam, like, Whatever their split screen is over online, I forget the term, but I have to try it out. I'd I'd try to stream that and get a video of it. It's probably kind fun. of pointless, but just fun. <laughs> Still, I mean, if you're playing a big screen and if you have your headset on and 
two people in a theater playing, you know, split screen or, you know, cause it's the same kind of old school, uh, I think where everyone has to stay on the same part of the screen. So you can't really progress unless your buddies walk forward. So it would be fine in a, in a gigantic, uh, movie auditorium theater thing. If that's what you mean, if you can play a big screen, that would be really cool. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Cause, um, with my rift Oculus meta, whatever you want to call it, you can still use an Xbox controller and it works perfectly for all of it. So really neat. I wonder how that would work controlling two things, but. So we'll have to out. check it out. It was funny. Um, about an hour before we came on here. Best like, you guys playing something tonight or what are you doing tonight? Mike? we have a podcast. It's Thursday. Oh yeah. That's the rumor. She's like, and just the way she said it was funny. You guys playing something tonight? I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, no way with podcast. Oh, who's on? Who's on the show? I'm like, no one is just Wookie and I. We don't have a guest. Oh, you don't have a guest this week, huh? I'm like, <laughs> why, is she, why is she acting like that? She's just fucking with me. It's funny. I'm like, fuck you. And I left. <laughs> <laughs> Not relevant to anything. I just thought it was funny. It made me laugh. Fuck you, wife. <laughs> Go away. So I'm yeah, um, 40 something years old, and it's just funny because obviously we play stuff together and we play with our nephew and other people. And it's just like when she says things, it's kind of like, like momming me, I call it. Like, you going to go play your little games? <laughs> like, fuck you. <laughs> you going <laughs> to. You gonna go read your little romance novels, Beth? Yeah. Whatever she read. You know, watch your trash walk... TV. <laughs> yeah, if I ever walk by her in real life, she's reading a book. I'm just gonna flip it up, like smack it. You reading your little books? <laughs> your little left or right, um, top or bottoms? It was funny if anyone on Twitter follows us. I tweeted this Sunday night, but one of her favorite podcasts is called Reality Gaze. And it's two gay guys that watch all the trash TV and kind of rip on it. It's pretty funny. That's got to be fun. Yeah. They were, uh, they're traveling around. So they were in a city near us. So we went and saw them and it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> pretty good time. Recommend it. They seem like bad weather follows them everywhere they go. They brought the heat wave. And then the next town, like there's some kind of storm, like blizzard or <laughs> something. I was crazy, but. Aside from that, I, I recommend it. It's a good time. <laughs> did they did they come down here? Because we have a heat wave too. <laughs> I think they did. I don't know how close to you, but because <laughs> I, I think they were down there, and then they went to New York and came our way. So you keep yeah, you keep putting your throat at something. It's in a pill. <laughs> I was trying to figure out. How could we do sign language with pill hands? Like, <laughs> in case I couldn't talk at all. You just do like the semaphores thing, kind of like the uh, the Battle of Five Armies. You had the flags with the different, you know, positions. <laughs> it all just means something else. Uh, speaking of Five Armies, we'll get back to VR here, but I just started uh, Return of the King audiobook a couple of days ago. We got through all the rest of them. Got and, uh, through. <laughs> Andy Circus narrating Jesus Christ that's an audiobook <laughs> um I don't remember how it came up at work but um a couple of people at work like my old boss that sits next to me now and the other person I don't something came up about reading a book and I mentioned that and then we just sat there and talked about Lord of the Rings for like an hour it was pretty cool <laughs> nice yeah Speaking of that, I'm going back to the Hobbiton. I'm going back to the Hobbit Hall. I'm so excited. Yeah. Tomorrow's Wookiee's birthday, and he's going back to Hobbiton soon. <laughs> the end of July or so. It's awesome. Yeah, that's. I think that's how I was telling him about that. I don't know how it came up, but it turned into how we were all starting to start identifying as hobbits and eating more and getting fat. Not that we're, I mean, we're going way off the rails we are, but um, <laughs> I've been eating like less. I've been going 
one meal a day and it still works. I'm so shocked. <laughs> so I'm not a hobbit anymore. They they can't eat no. one meal a day. What does that make me? Yeah. An elf? I can't really have to run. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway. Back to VR. What's on the what's new coming out for VR? Oh, don't ask me stuff like that. There's so much <laughs> crap I can't even like grasp it all. But the last couple of weeks there's been a lot every week. Right now there's the summer uh Steam summer sale. So um yeah, any games you, you want to check out, it's the best time. <laughs> yeah, I keep getting you know the pop up on my phone and it's just like you have this <laughs> Sometimes it'll tell you the name of the game that's on sale, that's on your wish list. It says, you have something. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to look, and it's just scrolling. Like, everything yeah. I've ever wish listed ever is on sale. Like, oh, no. Yep. I was oh, thinking no. about that. Because, um, like, I have all the consoles, so, like, Nintendo games. They'll go on sale, but it's, like, 5% off. So, I was wondering that today. You should probably focus on if you have a backlog. Nintendo doesn't seem to do a very good job of, you know, bringing their older cata- catalogs of games forward. So I'm like trying to figure out which game to play next and clean up my backlog. I've been trying to do that a little bit. <clears throat> I'm like, maybe I got to start there because I don't trust them to bring any of those games. Like, if I buy five <laughs> games because they're like 25 or like 75% off and I never play them. It's probably safer to have those on computer and Xbox where they actually carry that stuff forward. And we just build a computer, yeah. Or on the Switch, like yeah, they have some of the sixty four games online now if you if you have the online service, but it's not like if you buy it and don't play it for like five years that you're guaranteed to play it just because you have it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's I loved used to love Nintendo hardcore, but it I Got sick of the same buying the same games over and over again, not just the e shops, but it just burns me out because I'll just be like, Oh, I'm gonna play that again. I know it now, it's on sale, I'll buy it, and you know, be a few years, and then it's like, Can't play it, different, different console, gotta buy it again. Like, oh, come on, yeah. it drives me batty. Or like, I get it, you Mario know, Kart's like eight thing. fucking years old, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I agree tough. though, yeah. I was trying to uh, think of the last couple games I actually completed, air quotes, pill quotes. Because <laughs> um, I got a PS5 to get ready for VR, uh, PSVR 2 coming out. So I was checking out old PSVR games, which the ones that, that um, are exclusive are freaking fabulous, I must say. But So I've also picked up some of the older, like, really good games I've never been able to play because it's my first PlayStation, blah, blah, blah. So I bought so a couple weird. games. And I'm like, don't don't create a backlog on here too now. Like, settle down. Um, <laughs> I finished um, Spider-Man. I'm halfway through the second, like the Miles Morales one. Good stuff. Um, I finished Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I've, I mean, I have some DLC to get through, but I finished the game. I think I had like 400 hours on it. Jesus. So I was trying to like remember what games have I actually finished lately. <laughs> it's not a lot. I'm not, it's not a lot. I'll say that. Did you finish GTA Storyline in VR? I have not. So, and the only reason for that. You can't see me, but I'm G- turning my head. <laughs> Is GTA like they update their freaking launcher, and every time they do that, you gotta yeah. remember how to update the mod and go through it, and it's just like ah. <laughs> yeah, that stuff drives me crazy. That's the only reason. I, I'm it's still on my list. I have a like like a short list of stuff I have to do. It's on there, but I accidentally bought um, the Ghost of Shushima on PS Five. Yeah. I had it on my wish list. Or no, I was trying to figure out this was the only game I couldn't get to wish list. So I was like fucking with it, and I somehow bought it. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess that fixes that. But 
haven't yeah. started it yet because I've been going through um, uh, what's the one with the dinosaurs and or the monsters and shit. The um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, I've really liked that game, and now that they've announced the VR version or addition to the second one when PSVR two comes out, I'm really p- pumped because. I know you tried it and didn't care for it much, but I've I've I'm at least halfway through that in a very short amount of time. So I just got bored. It was like, eh, I mean, it was fun to play, but it's just like repetitive now. And I was like, oh, this should that should be a little more lenient on this. But <laughs> I mean, robotic dinosaurs, bows and arrows with you know, yeah, red hair. Yeah, you know, what what's to go wrong? But <laughs> it uh, it just was like. It was it was dragging and I was so sad. Ghost of Tsushima is way more my style, but then I got annoyed because they have all these cool outfits you can get. You can you know make dress yourself like a little old samurai, but then there's like the quiver mm. always shows up, like the arrow quiver, even if it's empty, it's like <laughs> sticking out of your back and it ruins all the clothes. I was like, I think I'm gonna wait because like eight million people were requesting to hide that just so they could walk around and take photos and shit. <laughs> I'll wait until they patch that out. I just haven't finished it. But nice. Ghost of Tsushima is fucking fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's Tenchu with the, the samurai, like honorable samurai combat is skill and timing based. And then the, the Tenchu stealth combat is just, you know, patience based. It is pretty, pretty fucking rad. Ooh, that's my hard. driving force to finish uh, Zero Horizon Dawn or whatever it's called. So Horizon <laughs> Zero. Dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zero, Zero Horizon Dawn. Yeah, my brain sucks sometimes. Yeah, but I played um, Wipeout. It's like a racing game. It's like fucking pod racing in VR. Only that they some races have weapons. Like that's pretty fucking cool. Like, I remember uh, Wipeout being it. like a cool thing, but I didn't know it had a VR. Is that that's PlayStation only? Yep. Fuck. So it came out on PS4, and then they did a PS5 upgrade for it. So I just don't like exclusives. I got a gold yeah. PS4 just sitting there. It's yeah. like, mm. well, that's but why I, I got the PS5 to get ready for VR. Like, what? Well, I found a version one headset for pretty cheap, and it's like brand freaking new so i'm like fuck it let's do it controllers are a little goofy with some games but overall like like they have a light gun i don't know why the hell meta doesn't have a light gun because the games you can play that light gun it's fucking phenomenal (laughs) like what the hell um i I they would dominate the market because i'm still like every time we play a shooter game we get kind of into it we don't we don't all have time to play at the same time a lot. But when we right. start to get into it, I'm like, I really need, you know, like a gun or the stock because it's, it's, it's so hard to like aim a sniper at long distances. Cause on the quest, you can't really see long distances. So sometimes you're not aiming long distances, but you, you, your arm shakes cause you don't have anything to hold on to. It drives me nuts. Cause what were we playing recently? Um, the zero caliber. zero caliber. Yeah. Like they have, you know, I got like the 50 cal in that game. And if I can hit something, it's one hit. Like you guys are shooting at somebody and I'm like, send them across the room. <laughs> but then if I try to use the fucking scope, it's like, and it seems kind of realistic, but it's also like, I can't lay down. The game doesn't really seem to like that. And there's no, no like place to lay. Like when you lay down, you're like almost like under the ground. If like there's one little bump rise, it can't really seem to get over that to shoot pain in the ass for like a run and gun, you know, small map game. So. Yeah, I really want, you know, stock. If they just gave you a fucking light gun that still had controller buttons and shit on it with the joysticks, come on, guy. And that's exactly what the PlayStation 1 is. It's on each handle, it's like a controller. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it's, it seems like you could just totally do it because that's all the, the magnetic little gun stocks they have um, are just like, and it just make that into a fucking controller. Yeah. Bricks. I probably hurt myself with it anyway. <laughs> probably. I played uh, some Blood and Truth. That's pretty phenomenal. It's like an action. You're kind of sitting in a movie. It's just kind of on rails to a point. Kind of not. You can kind of choose where to go and stuff, but 
It's pretty crazy. And then uh, Astrobot is like a VR platformer that's really neat. But I like they have a. I haven't got to play with other people because there's no one else here. But they have a lot of asymmetrical game modes, like a lot, and they all seem like they'd be fun as hell. So next time we have everyone how together, people, well, how many people do you need to play those? Because I'm always you only need, in asymmetrical combat too. You only need two, but it, they can. It's like two to six, depending on the game mode. But if it's like one, one of them, five, and yeah, stuff like that. Like one of them, the VR player is a cat, and all the other people are little mice, and it, you have to like hide from the cat. And you have to, like, the cat can, like, swipe and try and catch you, and you have to, like, get to the hole. Like, it's just fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. That's just one. There's, like, at least ten or more, I think, different modes like that. It's really neat stuff. So, Like, one, is it you're kind of, not like... everybody's got... in VR? Sorry. No, only one person's in VR, and the other people are playing on the TV with controllers, like a normal game. Oh. So there's another one where, like, the VR guy is, like, Godzilla or King Kong. And the other four are like trying to kill you, and you're running around like shooting, and the map kind of scrolls sometimes. And like, I can pick you up and like tear you apart or throw you, but on your screen, like, I'm just fucking huge, and you're just, it's just like a shooter at that point, like a third person. It's just cool stuff. Yeah, I love those games. <laughs> just wish you had more people in your house. You know, don't have that much. Yeah. That's like always been my one argument to have children. Like, I'd always have someone to play with. I might not they'd always resent. enjoy it, but <laughs> they'd resent you. Probably. Like, fuck people you. We're not playing your shit. <laughs> people who want their kids to grow up and play sports, the kids play piano and vice versa. And, you know, been there. Yeah. <laughs> my plan was to pretend to not want them to play shit. Yeah, and then they would play shit. (laughs) Keep them out of there. Yeah, (laughs) they break into your thing and like you know just like get gum and cheese and shit all over your controller and you're secretly you're you're like yes, they're interested in your game. The punishment is you have to play with me all weekend. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. On the levels I choose. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Well, that time went quick. (laughs) Can I pose a real life conundrum? Yeah. What time is it? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, and you know me more closely than most. Yeah, I'm getting this chair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, like, most of the time, my brain seems like I lean towards minimalism, right? So, Mm -hmm. I don't. You know, do this except for like when rare things catch me. You know, I have piles of Legos. Um, I see these joy toy robots, and I'm like, "What the <laughs> hell? What the fuck is this?" And now I have like six of them. They're way too expensive. They're way too cool. They got like canvas backpacks. Like you look at the back of the box, and it's just like this weird skinny robot, but it's got all this like actual canvas bags, like ammo bags and pouches, and those little clips. That you you know you gotta like squeeze to get like your backpack strap off. It's got those, and you need tweezers to like get them stuck yeah. together. And I've got like too many of those, but it's kind of like it's gonna make me sound stupid. I love cars. PJ knows that. Um, got the old <laughs> Volvo, and it's like the dream car thing. But sometimes I lean back and say like, you know what? I need to just sell all the cars. I've only got you know like two ish. Um, but my brain's like, I need to like sell, you know, all the cars and just get like the Toyota Corolla that everybody drives. Just you know, because you get you used to be able to get them cheap and they're reliable as crap. I just no frills. I just need like just get rid of all these things that I'm paying for. And in my hunt for that, the used car market is nuts. So the car I have is Toyota CHR, gorgeous, so perfect. It's only missing one feature that I need. Um, and it's just like you know, blind spot monitoring. No, blind oh. spot monitoring. <laughs> monitoring. I don't need a ball warmer. It's fucking 100 degrees down here. Um, but that car I bought, it now sells for like 5 to 6K more than I bought it for. The exact same car, like this one. 
And it's like, well, shit. And now those Toyota Corollas, they're all like 16, 18 grand, which is yeah. almost exactly what I paid for this 10 year newer car with all the features and, you know, none of the miles. And it's like the used car market is nuts. Like, mm -hmm. what the hell is going on? So I'm like, well, that can't, like, it wouldn't make any sense for me in any fast to get rid of the car I have to trade in for anything. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The old classic car I have shot up 36% in value for the condition, like the good condition where passers-by can't really see any of the problems. 36%. Like, it's worth over twice what I paid for it. <laughs> and like, holy shit. Um, and I hear Nicole, she's going to slap me for talking about it. Um, girlfriend's walking around. She doesn't like my new idea. So I was, I, while I was looking for like safe daily drivers with a little bit of fun, because I was like, maybe I keep the Volvo, get rid of the Toyota before I realized that I did the numbers and I just, it, it would be a dumbass decision to get rid of either one of those. Um, I stumbled onto these Mazda Miata, which you, you've seen them everywhere. There's, they're 30 years old. There's millions of them. And everyone's like, except for them being a small car, everything lines right up. Like, you can get gas mileage, dependable, parts are cheap, easy to fix. You know, handles great, safe, all this stuff. And uh, I was like, well, I never really thought of one before. And I don't really like convertibles. I think most of them are. Then I met this dude. He, <laughs> Ferrari trained, like body shop mechanic, anything from like the 60s to 80s Ferraris. Modifies, you know, like up scales things and, you know, does like restorations on classic cars. He makes his own bodies to put on Miatas because Miatas, if you don't know PJ and other folks, I didn't really, I, I kind of knew, but I didn't really put two and two together. They're like, everyone loves the little British roadster, like sports car thing, but the, reliability on those is like you're going to have a pack of wrenches because you're always going to be wrenching and people that like those old british sports cars they like to do the wrenching so somebody had, was like why don't we make little tiny british roadster cars that everyone likes but with japanese quality so that's what the mazda miata is so you can run them for like four hundred thousand miles and shit um he, he he makes like ferrari style bodies like body kits and like makes the whole car and he did like an <laughs> Aston Martin and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> so now don't check me. Wanna, I kind of want to buy one of those. Cause he's got one, like, you know, like it's like 25 or 15 K to start with like the convertible one. You got to provide a donor car. And then it's like, that. I'm like Oof, that's do it. Let me it. say something for the listeners, just for reference. <clears throat> if you ever play a GTA with Wookiee, he owns every freaking property and has like whatever 50 cars on each property. Like I, he has a problem. Well, I, I keep trying to count <laughs> those cars and I keep losing. I keep forgetting to count. Like you can go through the phone menu and I'm like, I lose count. Like I'd have to write it down and take screenshots because there's just so many. Um, like if someone made a VR game, <clears throat> it's just a bunch of garages and different cars where you could just drive the car from one garage to the other. That's it. He'd be in heaven, I think. I'd be like, well, I got to make it like some people, you know, organize their GTA garages with all of the Ferrari knockoffs and all the same color. And mine's like, well, you need them, especially in like the business office. It's all pretty and lit. I'm like, you know, I've got them all staggered. There's like a couple of old racers, and, you know, the logos and then like a Cruella de Vil car in hot pink, you know, or like metallic pink that I've had for ages. Um, but yeah, so now here I am trying to get rid of like stuff, get rid of all the stuff. Cause I just, I just, it's weighing on my mind and I don't need it because that's a tendency. And then as soon as I'm trying to like make the math work on getting rid of vehicles, my brain's like, you could just add another one. <laughs> it's way easier. It's half the way. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it, I, I try to do research, all these YouTube mechanic people, and I watch some of these videos, and even a guy at work, and I, like, everyone's like, you won't regret it. Like, they don't know about the, the customization for the body, just the Miata itself. Everyone's like, you won't regret it, because nobody <laughs> regrets it. I guess maybe if they, you know, suck at driving, they might, but like all the people who are like, just, just get it. They, you know, they, they buy a one from like 1990 with like, you know, 150,000 miles or like, best decision I ever made. I'm like, how can you struggle to be like more minimal focused 
and keep buying shit at the same time, and then there's a huge <laughs> cognitive dissonance in there. It's like, I'm the wrong person to ask. Shit. You don't care about cars at all. Oh, no, cars, but like, same problem, different uh, medium. Like, I just built that Optimus Prime Lego set. I have no fucking where to put them. Yeah. So it's like, and I still have my eyes on like three other things. Like, <clears throat> I'm going to build an add on to my house out of Legos for my Legos. Out of, out of Legos to store Legos. <laughs> and yeah, like the Lego catalog had like Forceman's Hideout, which I, I just, I didn't, I didn't pull the trigger on because I didn't want to spend $150 on Legos. Then I was like, how much is the old one? Because there's Brick Link and other sites like that. And you can get the old one that I used to have. It's like a nostalgia kick. And I messaged PJ about it. I was like, Oh my god, but until the 22nd of June, if you spend 150 bucks, you get this remake of it, and that's one of my favorite Which sets in childhood. Is fucking bullshit, because I bought Optimus right before that offer, and I'm buying, Ooh. um... Fuck, the, the droid from Jedi Outcast it comes out right after that is deal the, is up. the new metal, like, square droid? Like, the big one? Yeah. Is like 100 bucks? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I emailed them, like, can we do something here? No. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, you can get the set for like 35 bucks. Yeah, 24 bucks. But like, I went to buy it because I'm silly that way. But there was like no buy button. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's probably waiting until after that sale was done. But they originally you get for like 80 bucks. I was like, well, I don't want to. Like, I'm trying to get rid of these Legos. And I see that yeah. one that sparked that, you know. Oh. So Pardon me. they put out the hideout one. They're redoing the, the old main huge spaceship one. They're redoing or releasing one of the huge fucking castles from way back that are way cooler than the ones they have now. It's like, stop. <laughs> yeah, because the ones they have now I have no interest in, but they, the old ones had like the hill and they were built on it. They are coming yeah. out with like a big one, a new one that's like 400 bucks. That yep. thing looks fucking rad. It's like it wraps around and it turns like into a little castle villa, but when you wrap it around, I'm like, that shit needs to go on my desk. Like, I need yep. to sell all the other ones, but it's like, <laughs> I still have the Ultimate Collector Series Snow Speeder in the box. That's crazy. That's awesome. I've got like, <laughs> I have probably more Ultimate Collector Series ones in the box. And then, you know, like, <sighs> I ain't got time for all this shit. And then those robots, I mean, I could probably make 20K out of the, just the junk I have in my house. <laughs> Because, you know, it appreciates in value and stuff like I keep trying to get rid of shit. <laughs> As I'm trying to get rid of shit, I see shit, and then I want to buy yeah. that shit. And it's like, I need to go be a I mom. feel bad when I'm like, hey, check this out. I'm like, probably shouldn't show them that. Because <laughs> those robots yeah. are freaking cool. You got me one for my birthday last year, the year before. I'm not sure which one, but yeah, totally posable and freaking awesome and you can do so much crap with them it's just like my, my twitter pick is one of the robots i opened and, and did and i did a, like a little like you know the king yo like finger gesture and you can do that and they have all these guns and shit so like i need that one and that one and that one and that one <laughs> yeah. i don't need it like i want to oh. buy those and even with legos it's like i want to make stop motion films <laughs> like <laughs> but to bring it back to VR a little bit, why the fuck isn't there a Lego VR game where you can just dump out a bin of bricks and build shit, and then, just like that museum, shrink down and drive whatever the fuck you build and have, like, a quest editor and map editor and all that shit? It, <laughs> Lego has missed the boat. They keep making games, and it's, they're just adventure games. I'm sure people love them the way they are, but it's like, if you did that, I want to build. Could, like, <laughs> if you could dump out pieces and, and build that shit, or if it had plans where you could build like the castle that I'm talking about, or the Forceman's hideout and make a bunch of these things and shrink down and make an RPG and run through that shit. Yeah. Wookie wouldn't leave. I would bedroom. pay double just... for any set. Like if to get you get it unlocked like, in the game. Yep. You unlock it in the game, you can build it and you can run around in it. Like Jesus Christ, that's all I want. Yeah. Like you said, the Keep action you know, games are fun, but I want to build shit. It's Lego. That's yeah, what Lego is. And then use it. Because if you could have like a NVR, you could have like one of my favorite movies of all time is the old 1938 Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. You know, it's all swashbuckling and they're kicking people off the stairs. You know, like if you do that shit to Lego guys and hear like the Wilhelm scream, wow, you know, as they're going yeah. off the fucking side of a 
staircase or like the Helm's Deep. Can you imagine that shit? <laughs> Probably crash your headset, but like it's our Lego. Like they had like a Lego City game that kind of looked like GTA, but it wasn't even multiplayer. You couldn't even co-op that shit. That was kind of like that one might be it, but it's like no, can't do anything. But yeah, if you just did in like an all-out Lego game, I would be hard to get me away from that. What kind of gave me hope for a bit there was they were doing AR shit with sets. And then they also had the interaction like, um, what was it, Lego? Kind of like the Skylander games where they had all the actual oh, yeah, little toys. Statues. But you could like put it in the game and shit. Like I'm like, okay, it's coming. That's, that's yeah. the next step to VR here. <laughs> and, and then pfft, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> yep and they have stuff for audio you listeners learn. i dramatically looked at the camera sorry yeah go ahead come on lego i'll just say like they have the things where you can kind of like digitally build stuff and make instructions and then you can buy all the pieces you do so you can build your own custom set but yeah. it's like and then it's like Man, you're almost <laughs> there warmer <laughs> warmer <Yeah. laughs> These these headsets have hand tracking. You know, yeah, yeah. Because I'll still. I mean, you know, there's there's finger tracking now. I'll tickle someone's bum in VR if they make this goddamn game. Like I don't care. It's not what I meant. I meant you know putting the Lego. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'll still walk by the Lego aisle when I go to like Target or some shit, and I'll see like the little city things with like the, the trucks and the, the monster trucks and the race cars, and I have a couple, you know, rally cars like you know as big as your palm of your hand Lego cars in the shelf. It's like you could put some driving physics in that drive, you know, make a rally game. I mean, you can do whatever you want, Lego. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's just crazy. Like, there's something therapeutic about putting Lego sets together. Like, you bought me the Castle Grey Skull for Christmas, and I always have like a long break on Christmas. So, and it's like Beth. The next three Christmases and birthdays combined because <laughs> it was like <laughs> 300 bucks. But girlfriend was like, you got to get it for him. And I was like, I know, you got to do it. So, I mean, the set is so fucking cool. And like, it was so fun to put together. It took me like four or five nights. Mm -hmm. and But like, at that same time, the memories I have of building it, because I was building that, Beth was um, either like, I don't think she was painting or diamond painting, but she's doing some kind of craft thing. And we watched Golden Girls the entire time. And it was like right the week Betty White died. So I was like, that's mm -hmm. weird. Um, so like just the memories built into that. And then same thing with Optimus. She was painting, I was doing that, and we kept watching Golden Girls. Like it's just it's just so cool and relaxing and totally like bliss. It's just like I want that in VR, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. I would I mean, no joke. If they started at like Emu VR, where you're in like ninety bedroom and you built Legos, and then you're just basically level designing, because you know, we used to make stop show, stop motion Lego videos when we had like summer between school and shit like that. Like, it, it would like they missed the boat on the the game when like you know uh, how Minecraft came out. That's kind of like Lego the video game. Yeah. Um, the game we're describing here, if fucking Lego built it. God damn. Yeah. You could take any set, like I said, with a quest, simple quest editor, do any fucking story you wanted, and like, you, like with you and GTA Race mm -hmm. creations, like, sky's the limit. Like, what the fuck? Come yeah. on. Put out a new set every month, week. I don't care. I'll buy it. Like, just do it. After we revamp the, uh, the studio, and we can have, you know, like, synced up avatars and things like that, so nobody will ever shut about the pills. Spend more time on the booth and the lighting, then the cereal's going to tear that apart. Um, already had. <laughs> but then, you know, maybe make, like, a clubhouse, like, you know, launch a Patreon. Only Patreon subscribers can go to the clubhouse underneath, like, in the basement and have all these little added-on mini-games, like, make a Lego set, you know? Yeah, there's going to be a Lego table. Block. <laughs> yeah, just, like, boop, and it's full of Legos, and you just put them together. Nobody would talk, no guests would say anything. <laughs> Just be putting Legos together and be like, yeah, I need, those, I need that flat two by four thing. And then that's it. I was trying to tell Beth, like when we were, I don't know, seven or eight playing Lego, like we just sit there building shit. Oh, you got a thin 
four by four, four block. Yeah, four. we had our own yeah. little language and description. Like, yeah, I was trying to describe to her like this is what we called this piece, and she's like, I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need that three that angled three block thing, and it's like you yeah. know, the little corner thing. <laughs> And never had one of the separator things. Those are like rich people things. The little thing you push and pull the blocks apart. Never had one. Now they kind of all come with them. You had to order those separately. And I was like, yeah. I can't get the four bucks for that. Yeah. I could get another set for four bucks, like a small one, you know. <laughs> rich people. I have like toys. 50 of those things laying around. Yeah. I, I tweeted at Lego and I'm like, can we start like a trading program for these? Like, <laughs> can I get like 50 black blocks for this? Or, you know, yeah. Nothing. Imagine <laughs> making like the Star Wars games shit. Cause I got like this, this, the, uh, sand crawler shit, mm-hmm. you know, and like you buy that and you could, if you could scan that somehow, put that in the game and then, you know, make like Tatooine, you got like the land speeder and that's all you bought. And I br- trundle up in the fucking, thing and i'm trying to run you over or something like that Still i have your... jabba's palace the full fucking thing yeah. <laughs> and a sky hopper what else is sitting over there <laughs> yeah I, I, I got piles of these damn thing duplicates and shit <laughs> i think i need to get really good at taking photos and then get rid of them just keep the photos because they've got like you know the the prequels like anakin starfighter i've got a yellow one and a black one and like like why did i need two <laughs> you know i got a couple of v-wings that i didn't even know existed like, oh, I forgot there was a V-Wing, and I have two. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. I have the Mines of Moria set, and that's, like, the only one I don't dust, so it has, like, this really cool-looking layer of <laughs> dust on it and shit. <laughs> Stupid. Like, when, uh, in the, um, Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings movie, when they open the book of Ma- Mazarbul <laughs> or whatever, and, like, the, the dust gets on Sam, he's like... <laughs> I love that movie so much. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Yeah. Buy Legos, kids. Buy mine. I'll put them up for sale. Support the <laughs> podcast by paying me triple. So, I, you know, get even hit even harder on those new tax things that they're doing with the $600 limit. And then you get a 1099 or whatever that bullshit is. Yeah. Don't bring up that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a happy place. <laughs> you know, am I supposed to sell Legos? I gotta sell all my shit so I can buy this car. <laughs> well, I was telling Beth like Castle Grayscale, she's like, All right, you built it. Now what? Now it goes up on the shelf. And then what? And every time I look at that goddamn thing, I get happy. <laughs> and yeah. at some point I'm gonna take it off the shelf, destroy it, and rebuild it. <laughs> Duh. Tweak it a little. But that that thing had like all the same little traps and doodads that the old he-Man toy we had the big fucking plastic and yep. all these it's... elevators and shit and I was like oh my god yeah it is insane that you okay sorry I <laughs> tapped my headset I tapped my headset <laughs> and I didn't realize it and then trying to untap it I tapped it again it was no. but that me having to get you that Castle Grayskull set, just because of what it is and what it stood for and all that shit. With all the, it's got all the same things as me yeah. with this other fucking car. So it's like a daily driver, but it looks like it's a fucking Ferrari looking thing. And then, you know, but it, <laughs> it, 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 I can't. Everyone's, every instinct says it's stupid, but every other instinct says it's fucking go. And then it was the same thing, but yours is, you know, getting you the, that, that, I guess that was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> When you said you Nobody. jabbed your headset, I was playing um, Blood and Truth last night, and the motion controllers, like for PlayStation PSVR one, they're like this tall. Mm-hmm. And I With grabbed a grenade. On it. Yeah, I grabbed the grenade. I'm like, and I had a gun in my other hand. I'm like, I wonder if I can bite the pin out. So I do that, <laughs> and I'm not used to that thing. So I like punch myself in the face. <laughs> Thankfully, the little ball on top is actually like squishy, so it wasn't that bad. But I was like, "God damn it!" Like, <laughs> yeah, made me laugh. That's why they don't have gun controllers for the quest people because I'd be killing myself with it. There's too many quests out there. You can't can't be sure everyone's not going to punch the TV. I don't. I, I if I punch myself once, well, it's worth it. I don't care. It's, yeah, <laughs> give us 
bring back the old things like the old Super Scope from the Super Nintendo. Give us something like that in VR, you know, because yeah. that shit was fun. I don't care how old you were. If how far um, you were, you couldn't have one, but friends. On the them. Switch, with all that shit, what are they called? With all the cardboard stuff? Oh, the, like the, almost like the ingenuity stuff, but yeah, they had those yeah. cardboard. So I, I grabbed, things. I think almost all of those sets when they were like, oh, these aren't doing well, and they kind of were like, 75% off, I grabbed them. <laughs> they have the VR set with, they actually have VR glasses and stuff. And half of the games on there, like they have 30 mini games or whatever. It's just like super scope shit. It's so fucking cool. Like, yeah. How did those things fail? Like, do people just, did they not advertise? I don't think they did market? because, you know, the few people that do say that cardboard, fuck that, what the hell? But if it's like, it's Nintendo. Give it a shot. It's probably fucking genius, and it fucking is genius. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's so weird. I, I mean, I get it. Like Nintendo, I saw those things. I'm like, I bet those are fun, but something's gonna be the catch twenty two and take me off. And now I kind of wish I'd probably bought a couple of those. At least. <laughs> the only thing is, like, if you build them all, it's like, then you got to put them somewhere. That's where yeah, you can't, can't tear them down. You don't want to wear the cardboard out. Yeah. But freaking awesome. You yeah. can still kind of find them in places if you look, if anyone's looking. But More shit in my house. I still so, have a whole tub of Nerf guns that I meant to customize like 10 years ago. No. Nope. Just sitting there. I'm like, I got to give those to some neighborhood kids. Something. <laughs> yeah, I gave my uh, big Gatling gun to our nephew because we used to have a Nerf war at least once a year, Christmas, if not more. And I'm like, you know, I bring this here all the time. Just keep it. And it'll just be yeah. here. <laughs> like, I'll come down to bring VR fresh VR batteries. And... Yeah. What's that? There's a Nerf VR game. I don't know if it's out, but it's coming out soon. If not, it's it looked actually pretty good. Funny. Nice. Has like all the guns and shit. Oh, Fortnite guns, no. <laughs> Pretty much. I think they did have a way to customize some specific Nerf gun with like a vector like kit to add on. <laughs> so mm. your Nerf gun looks like my gun. Like, oh, don't show me that. <laughs> yeah. It's in very, a very VR friendly romp, and you keep breaking away from that. Episode. Thank you for counseling me, Wookie's Couch episode. Um, write yeah. in if anybody cares one way or another. Like, you know, do you have a, a Mazda Miata and do you drive it? And would you daily drive a Mazda Miata? Let me know. <laughs> Talk me out of this because nobody else has yet. And it's an easy, easy tie into VR because I'm sure there's a, a Mazda Miata in some game somewhere. Maybe Project Cars 2, maybe. Yeah. Test we drive it out. Try that. I gotta tear yes. apart the damn racing wheel and get that loose. To uh, sorry, to, to scratch my eye and turn my headset off again. You gotta get that loose action fixed because if if you guys have a racing wheel and Project Cars too, and you can play that, holy god balls! That is the best. It is the best thing ever. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if the newer Project Cars support VR or not, or if there's the three. I think there was a three. Hopefully it does, because, oh my god. I I enjoy racing games and stuff, but like when it's more sim than racing, like I'm very much an asshole. I like to run people off the road and stuff, but I'll, any racing game in VR is just amazing, and that Project Gotham 2 is just jaw-dropping. Like, like in those old cars, like you like look out and the ground's right there, and it just it's it's insane. Yeah, the old <laughs> the old racers that were just like a, kind of a torpedo with like the four wheels on the outside and shit. Those things you're like on the ground and you see somebody's wheel creeping up, like and it just feels like there's a wheel like five inches yeah. from your face. And you're like, ah, and you start shaking and get nervous <laughs> and shit. Um, it's it's so much tighter because if we both had a wheel. Doing that, because if you have yeah. an Xbox, it's probably a little bit, you know, it, it's not as immersive, but you get a little bit more tighter control. But in the, the wheel, when it's it's got the force feedback, that's like you hit the gravel and it starts pulling you off the road. 
and like just managing to keep that car straight. I was amazed like how many times I didn't, like I still did smack into you, I'm sure, but like yeah, the epicness of keeping that car from running into you because there's so few, you would just be dead with that wheel there. It, there's yeah. nothing like it. Like no video game experience has come that close. No flying sim, no nothing. Because it's just like you, you hear the, with the audio on, I don't think I've played that on the Quest through the link, but we played it on the Rift quite a bit. The, the spatial yeah. audio that these things have, it, it just adds that layer. And it's just like, there's a car there. There's no doubt in your mind that there's a fucking <laughs> car right next to you. And then and you hit it, the physics freak out. The other thing, like when you do, like when you've knocked me off, they're like, I go fucking flying and I, I always have like VR 100%. So like, I see the camera, like I am flying through the air yeah. spinning. Like, <laughs> And the physics it's crazy. aren't like super great, so it's not like a completely yeah. correct crash. You're just like wobbling up in the air until you kind of <laughs> land somehow. And like just you can imagine a barf trail just squiggling out of there. Oh. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, the perfect corners and you go down the hill or go over a rise and you just like breakneck speeds in these old things and it's just like neck to neck and there's there's oh my god, there's nothing like that. <laughs> it's well worth buying a a racing wheel for just for that. Yeah. Obviously, because I wore mine the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, there was one other thing I was gonna talk about. If you're watching the video and you see the little scrolling picture of everything we were going to talk about, you'll see Orcana VR, Orcana conflict. Going um, to talk I kind of had everything mapped out we were going to talk about, so I had a little picture. Um, that game is like five or six bucks on Steam right now. Highly recommend it. I told the dev next time we have like a non-guest episode, we we're going to kind of talk about it way more, but I wanted to save that since we had so much other stuff going on. But check it out. It's a one-man team. The game's been out for a while. It's like an RTS where you can like go in God mode and control things and shrink down and actually fight um it's gorgeous i mean it's it's not like high def high you know ultra res textures but for vr game like it's gorgeous it's a lot of fun it's highly creative i recommend checking it out and then um, combat yep arcana conflict vr conflict kind of conflict it's um i'm just trying to get more eyes on it because it's been out for a while and it just hasn't ever gotten to see much of the light of day just because there's so much stuff but i found it on a sale a couple months ago i fell in love with it made a couple videos i want to try and see if he wants to talk to us um maybe at some point but he's like i want to add to it and do a sequel but just not enough people have played it to make it worth it so i'm trying to get more people to check it out so check it out it's cheap it's well worth it it's a lot of fun a lot of cool like story elements for an rts and a lot of like strategy which you know it normally comes with rts but like i don't know he just does a really cool job with everything and every level gets like really freaking harder than the last one and it's really really cool to figure out how to get through it so just wanted to shout it out Yeah, when people do put a lot of work into something like that, that's that's stuff we need to keep those devs yeah. going. I can't put myself in his shoe, like anyone's shoes like that, where you spend all that time and pour your heart into something, and like not enough people see it to make it worthwhile to continue. Oh, that's that just that hurts, especially when especially it's so when good. It, yeah, when the good stuff doesn't get the light. The spotlight that it needs. Yeah. I didn't know you had a whole other list of stuff to talk about. I just rambled. No, that's fine. I, like I said, I was going to dedicate a whole episode to it, but I don't want to do it this time since we had all that other stuff kind of happen. So, Is there co-op at all? Probably not. No, that was one of the things he was like, I would, would like to add it, but you know, yeah, I need more funding. <laughs> so, but I wanted to play the Atlas, and then um, maybe we can play that, and then uh, have an episode about it. Even if he doesn't feel like joining, at least get the word out, or just split an episode about 
experiences in both of those. Yeah. Next time, it's just the two of us will hopefully have done that. So, Trying to set a reminder. <laughs> but probably wrap it up here. Word. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out, watching, and listening. Reminder, audio people, There's we do the show in VR. Come watch us. Come join us, maybe, someday soon. But before that, if anyone wants to come talk to us, just hit us up on Twitter, and we'll, we'll get it set up. Yep. But thanks again. I am PJ. I might be Wookiee. And we don't say this is our VR verdict often anymore, but uh, I don't know. Enjoy VR. See you next week. <laughs> By Orcana Conflict VR. That's our VR verdict. <laughs>